Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're doing a quick course on Two Point Campus. I've spent a fair bit of time with the game already, and I've even got a Let's Play happening on the channel as we speak, but I'm making today's video in the hopes of helping you get a head start when you start to play for yourself. We'll be covering a variety of topics that can absolutely change the results you see, both from yourself and from your students. And as always, with these kinds of videos, I've got timestamps down below so you can jump around as you like. If this video helps you out, don't hesitate to let me know with a like and a comment down below, and if you have any questions or thoughts of your own, drop them in the comments too. Now with all that said, and no more time to waste, let's get started, shall we? Prioritize higher learning rates. While there are definitely ways you can see success without actually teaching your students, and we'll get into a few examples of those later in the video, chances are you want to at least sometimes play the game the way it's meant to be played. By that I mean you want to get students coming to your university, you want them learning, graduating with good grades, and you want to be making enough money to keep the ball rolling. One of the most crucial aspects to having all that working efficiently is learning rate. Each student has a learning rate that fluctuates based on a few different factors, and the higher the learning rate of a student is during a learning event, such as lessons, assignments, or private tutoring, the faster you'll see them gain XP and subsequently levels in their chosen course. Students at a higher level perform better, getting better grades, and making your university more appealing as well as more likely to win awards at the end of the year. Apart from that, a sizable chunk of your monthly income is actually dependent on how much XP your students acquire during that month. So a higher learning rate while taking classes, doing assignments, or getting private tutoring means more XP is gained more quickly, which in turn means you make more money. So how do we actually maximize learning rate? Well, it all begins before the school year even starts. When managing your courses, if you reduce the number of applicants that are actually accepted into your university, you'll see higher average learning rates as a result. Not all students are guaranteed to have a higher learning rate, but by reducing the number of applicants that are being accepted, you're basically rejecting the weakest students, so you won't be seeing some of the lowest individual learning rates among the new students arriving for the year, giving you a decent baseline to work with. If you don't want fewer students, you can also reduce your tuition fees. Lower fees means more students will apply, so you have more numbers to play with as you determine just how many applicants you accept. Naturally, keep in mind that your operating costs and how the reduced tuition fees might impact your financial situation might cause you some trouble if you're not paying attention. And as you reduce tuition fees, you'll also be impacting another source of learning rate, student happiness. Student happiness has an impact on both learning rate and the grades a student achieves when completing learning activities, so student happiness is doubly important. There are a huge variety of factors that impact student happiness. They need to be well fed, watered, washed, rested, so on and so forth. And you want to make sure these needs are being met, especially just before and during learning events. This is because happiness will almost always trend downwards. Right after eating, a student will slowly start to get hungry again. Right after drinking, they'll slowly start to get thirsty again. If their happiness drops low enough in the middle of class or on the way to class, their learning rate might drop rather significantly, and this applies to assignments and private tutoring as well, and regardless of which scenario they find themselves in, if that learning rate is dropping, then all your efforts in keeping them happy at other times are for nothing. While you can't tell your students when to eat or drink or shower or what have you, you'll want to make sure that they're always able to quickly fulfill these needs close to where they'll be spending most of their time. You'll also want to help them hit relationship and personal goals, which contribute towards their overall satisfaction, and you can always look for teachers and assistants that might help boost their happiness through traits like comic relief. On which note, some teachers are able to inspire students, and some room items can boost learning power too, and while these aren't related to happiness, it is a way to boost learning rates temporarily. Back on topic though, one of the biggest contributors to student happiness that you have a great degree of control over is their learning environment. Designing rooms for happiness. It may come as absolutely no surprise that the layout, contents, and quality of your rooms have a direct impact on student happiness. This is a staple of the genre, but there are some surprises that are worth keeping in mind. First things first, room attractiveness and prestige are major factors to consider in the environment section of keeping people happy in a space. Temperature is a factor too, but 
it's fairly self-explanatory and you'll be working with prestige and attractiveness right off the bat while temperature will become more of a thing further on in your career. The first consideration then is room prestige, important not just for student happiness while in the room, but also to increase your average room prestige, putting you in the running to win awards at the end of the year. The first aspect of a room that impacts prestige is its size. Yes, each room does have a minimum size that it has to be, but the larger you make the room, the more prestigious it'll be. Don't go overboard though, look for the tipping point where you start to see diminishing returns if the only reason you're making a room larger is for prestige. The other reason to make it larger, of course, is to have more space for the things you want inside the room. Every added item in a room increases its prestige further, and while you can only have one of some items, there are others, many others, that you can place multiples of. Once again, watch for the tipping point where duplicate items stop increasing prestige by as much. As you add more and more of the same thing to a room, the impact on prestige grows smaller and smaller, so once you hit that tipping point, change what you're adding. You can, if you want, add seemingly irrelevant items to a space, as long as they're available to add from this menu. Obviously, keep an eye on the actual cost, too, if financial management is a factor in your current situation, that is, but overall, you can't really go wrong with increasing the prestige level of your classrooms, bathrooms, lounges, dorms, and everything else besides. In fact, having higher quality dorms is actually particularly helpful, as it also increases the rent you can charge students for staying at said dorm, increasing your profit margins potentially very significantly. Another factor with room satisfaction is attractiveness. As you look at the various items at your disposal, you'll notice some have a direct impact on attractiveness, and this is a pretty simple relationship. Add more things that increase attractiveness, and you end up with a more attractive room, and the people inside a more attractive room are more happy for it. Keep in mind, everything I've said about prestige and attractiveness applies to the buildings themselves too. Hallways and spaces between rooms need to be prestigious and attractive too, using the same logic as what you apply inside rooms. Some items improve attractiveness, more items improve prestige, but more of the same item will give diminishing returns. You can select a building to see the kind of results you're getting, and external areas can be beautified to impact people's happiness when roaming around outside too. Make sure you have enough janitors on hand, to, you know, keep plants watered, to clean up litter, and to repair damaged items. This is a crucial part about keeping a room prestigious and attractive. It doesn't matter if you have a bunch of plants in a room if they're all wilted and dead. Apart from happiness, though, there's one more need that you can meet in rooms that may come as a bit of a surprise. Hygiene often takes a major hit for stressed out university students, but fortunately in the world of two-point campus, Using hand sanitizer is the equivalent to taking a shower. Sure, some rooms will have special items like sinks, and there's the shower itself, of course, but for literally any other room and for halls and outdoor spaces, you can place hand sanitizers for students to use, and it will fill their hygiene need right up, just as though they'd just taken a shower. What's more, students will use hand sanitizer mid-class and mid-assignment, so while they might arrive at a class filthy, they might be able to take a moment and use the hand sanitizer and improve their overall happiness and resulting learning rate in a way otherwise seemingly impossible. General Layout Tips There are many small factors that can show massive returns with just a slight adjustment to your approach when laying out rooms and campus buildings alike. Some of these might seem obvious and others might come as a surprise. For one, don't have just the one centralized washroom or just the one centralized shower. Don't expect your students to behave like real-world students who maybe go to the shower and the washroom right after they wake up or right before they go to bed or perhaps both. So, you need to have a few washrooms across your campus, some close to the classrooms and lecture halls, some close to the dorms and lounges, so on and so forth. Some of these washrooms might be assigned to staff only, some might be assigned to students only, and some might be mixed use. Showers are similar in some ways, as you can see here, though remember, you can use hand sanitizers as mentioned in the previous section to fulfill the hygiene need in a rather clever, if not unconventional way. 
The spread of washrooms and hygiene locations means your students are able to pick and choose which rooms to fulfill those needs in, and they won't have to run from one end of your campus to the other just to relieve themselves. If you were to let that happen, you can expect students to start missing classes or to start ignoring their essential needs, reducing their happiness, lowering their learning rates, and getting poorer grades as a result of the reduced happiness too. Keep in mind that students will queue up to fulfill their needs, whether academic, social, or emotional. For example, if you have a bunch of students that need to use a cubicle, but only one cubicle is available to use between them, they'll simply wait in line for their turn, as indicated by the appearance of this icon here. See, this icon is worth keeping an eye out for across all rooms and spaces, since it's a good indication that you need to add more of whatever is being queued for. Sometimes you can't do that, like for the key item of a classroom, but for washrooms, showers, hand sanitizers, bookshelves, cubicles, so on and so forth, you should absolutely get on top of it. Otherwise, students will literally stand there waiting their turn rather than finding something else to do while they wait. This can cause students to become unhappy from other unfulfilled needs, or it can cause them to miss and fail assignments that they simply couldn't finish because they were busy waiting in line instead. Now this applies for beds too. A single bed can help sustain five students, and you need to keep this one to five ratio in mind. A single dorm can of course have multiple beds, but if you have too many beds in a room, students start to get a little grumpy about it, though this does need further testing from my part. Either way, make sure the dorms are prestigious and attractive as described in the previous section to make sure you've maximized the rent you're charging each student to stay at the accommodations. You should also consider applying filters with regards to which students are staying in which dorms to control the flow of students from dorms to classrooms and that will help make things much more efficient, especially as the campuses start to get larger and larger. On the topic of size, remember the importance of the size of your rooms. In the previous section, we talked about how room size has an impact on prestige, but here, I'm more focused on the pure function of the room. Larger rooms will typically be able to fit more students or staff, depending on the type of room. Classrooms and lecture halls can only ever have a maximum of eight, a private tutoring room can only ever have a maximum of two, you know, the teacher and the student, so on and so forth. But rooms like libraries, staff rooms, student lounges, student unions, these can fit way more students the larger they are. This will have a direct impact on the effectiveness of these rooms. If a library can only fit a certain number of students and more students than that number need to use the library at the same time, well, you guessed it, some students are left behind. In the case of the library, this can prevent students from getting assignments done, regardless of how many cubicles and bookshelves are inside. And in the case of the student lounges and unions, etc., etc., this limits how many students are able to attend events at the same time and how many are able to just relax and lounge or just use the facilities at any given time too. The consequences are pretty self-explanatory, but just keep an eye on this number here to know exactly how many students or staff a room can support as you're building it. Some rooms, like the training rooms, work a little differently, where the limit is determined by how many of the main functional item you have in the room. Now, most rooms limit how many of the main functional item you can place in the first place, but again, some, like the training room, will let you place as many as you can fit to increase the overall room capacity. Staff Management Happy students are great, but without the staff to actually educate them and keep rooms clean and operate the facilities, nothing actually gets done. Staff come in three flavors, and each of them has their own responsibilities. Teachers are self-explanatory, but assistants are a bit of a catch-all, helping staff the libraries, helping serve at the food and drink kiosks, operating the student union, recruiting for student clubs, so on and so forth. The janitors, meanwhile, keep things tidy, upgrade items when told to do so, and they make sure all the equipment is well-maintained. Selecting a janitor also lets you specify which tasks you'd like any one of them to ignore or focus on, and this gives you some nuance to your approach. You can also pick janitors up and drop them off where you need them to get them on task. Just make sure the right item is highlighted when you drop them, as that indicates what you want them to prioritize right then and there. You can do something similar with assistants, assigning them to tasks based on their traits and abilities. A more capable librarian should work at the library, for example, otherwise, it's just wasted opportunities. On the note of librarians, keep in mind that certain rooms can have more staff added to improve function and efficiency. 
Just select the room and adjust the number here if it exists to adjust. Teachers can be assigned to courses when the course is about to start or even after they've started, and they can also be assigned to tutoring rooms in a similar way. Either pick them up and drop them off at the right room, or select the room and pick the teacher that should be teaching the class or otherwise assigned to the room. Now, tired staff don't work, or if they do work, they do so very poorly. Instead, they'll typically try to rest. A staff room helps facilitate said rest, and the more prestigious and fancy the staff room is, the faster your staff will regain energy and the faster they'll go back to work. Don't underestimate the importance of a good quality staff room. You need your teachers to be in the classrooms just as you need your students to be. I mean, arguably, you need your teacher there even more so than any one individual student, considering there is no class without a teacher. The same goes for assistants helping at the library or serving food and drink, and of course, janitors that make sure your beautifully laid out spaces don't fall apart and make everybody upset. Some rooms, as mentioned before, can have backup assistants and staff assigned to them to improve efficiency, again such as the library, but your top priority should be keeping an eye on traits when hiring, followed by training staff as and when needed to improve their capabilities as you need. Having more staff is a great way to keep operations smooth, but that's more salaries to pay, so try and strike the perfect balance and use staff assignments to make sure everybody is going where they should be. Increasing Campus Level As you build more and better rooms, as you get more and better staff, and as you improve your campus buildings as a whole, you'll see your campus level bar fill up. Every time it does fill up, you'll get more course points, which you can then use during summer break to unlock additional courses or to upgrade existing ones, opening up significantly more options as we'll discuss later. A slightly more subtle but potent way to increase campus levels is through educating your students. Every time they level up, students contribute a slight push to your campus level. That is to say, every time this circular bar fills up and a student levels up, and only when the student levels up, will you see the campus level bar inch forward. Simply gaining experience points is not enough. They have to actually level up. I stress that statement because here's where an essential secret sits. It's a lot faster to level up at lower levels than it is at higher levels. So if you want to rush campus levels for some reason or another, it might be time to focus on your lower level students with things like private tutoring to get them leveling up when they would otherwise be sitting idle during a break. Sometimes this might feel counterintuitive. A higher level student might actually need the tutoring for better grades, but if you desperately need the extra campus levels and associated course points before the year ends, you might just need to make that sacrifice. Extracurricular life. University is about more than just learning. In fact, depending on who you ask, learning is the least important part of university. Extracurricular activities, socializing, clubs, partying, that's what university is really meant for. Networking is the official term for it all, I suppose, but either way, you'll want to encourage and enable this aspect of student life at your campus, and there are a few considerations when doing so. Social items are any items that encourage interactions between people. They're typically marked out, and common sense goes a long way here, too. Sitting on a bench together, grabbing a bite together, chatting at the water cooler together, or jumping on a bed together are all great ways to make friends and more, and you'll often get student requests with regards to those aspects too. Allowing friendships and romances to bloom will help boost happiness, and we've already discussed at length how important that is. Apart from individual relationships, you can also consider providing clubs as an opportunity for growth. Depending on the clubs that the students sign up for, they'll gain access to various boosts and benefits. Maybe they'll be able to move around faster, maybe they'll be able to sleep and regain their energy literally anywhere while standing. Maybe they'll… well, you get the picture. Clubs require assistants to act as recruiters, so make sure to get them into place and get those benefits spreading among your students. Do not underestimate the value of clubs. They can make your student body that much more capable. Beyond clubs, there are events that you're going to want to host on campus too. Competitions are one thing, and we'll discuss those in a bit, but I'm talking about parties and movie nights and the like that boost student happiness and more. At times, students will ask for such events, but the benefits are motivation enough to do them of your own volition as long as funds allow. You can schedule them from each individual room or you can schedule them from the calendar screen, but regardless of where you try to schedule an event from, 
keep in mind that different rooms have different options and that the capacity of the room will determine how many students can actually participate. Keep in mind also that students need to have enough time to actually get to the event location from where they're standing when it starts and to leave it and go somewhere else if they're pressed for time afterward. And remember as well that the benefits from an event only last for so long after it's over. Try and set your schedules in a way that ensure the most number of students can attend while also retaining benefits for when classes resume. The winter holidays and spring break are a great time for giant parties, but you can also do smaller parties when you know certain students will be too busy to attend. Again, it's all visible on the calendar screen based on which classes are being held and when. Naturally, as you can see and as you'll quickly learn, it's not cheap trying to stay on top of student needs and wants while also trying to educate them and maintain your organization's prestigious standing. And so, you really need to know how to maximize cash flow. At the end of the day, you're operating a business. And what does every business need? An endless flow of cash. The more the better. We've touched on some of the ways that you can maximize your cash flow throughout this video, but in the interest of having it all in one place, organized and more concisely put, welcome to this section. Remember that students earning XP earns you money, so make sure they're learning at their best as often as possible. This means you'll want to increase their learning rate as much as possible by keeping them happy as discussed previously. Apart from that, don't hesitate to send students to private tutoring whether they need it or not. In fact, send them to private tutoring before they even start taking classes right when they arrive if you can. They'll get better grades, they'll earn XP, and you'll earn more money off them. It's a great trick to take advantage of in a pinch. Use private tutoring to take advantage of the gaps in education too. Sometimes students will have neither classes nor assignments and so they'll simply stop gaining XP and you'll not see the additional income from them. Send those students for private tutoring, though of course, make sure their needs are being met as well and that their learning rate is high too. There's no point having upset students as that'll be detrimental over the longer run. Remember too that you can make money off of rent and rent is higher when accommodations are fancier. Dorms with higher prestige and attractiveness mean you'll make more money off the students living in them. Tuition fees are a big source of income too, so don't hesitate to adjust it if you feel the need to sacrifice student happiness for money, or better yet, you can spend course points to upgrade courses and get even more students coming through so that each one can earn you more money through XP gains, through rent, and through tuition fees. More students means more money, but it also means more of an investment. If you ever need help with that initial investment, remember you can access the loans menu here to, well, take a loan. You'll have to pay it back, of course, with interest, and you can pay it back ahead of schedule to minimize your interest, but otherwise, loans will take a decent chunk of your income per month until they're paid off. It might hurt temporarily, but if it helps you set up for more growth and income in the long run, you might end up on top or you might end up needing a second loan, so be careful with your money and make sure you're relying on the operation of the university to keep you afloat. Yes, that includes things like when students pay money to buy hot dogs and coffees or buy drinks and food from the vending machines, but it also includes opportunities like holding events that bring in money, fulfilling objectives that do the same, or simply keeping students happy, trying to increase student intake without sacrificing quality, and then spending that money wisely to come out ahead. Ways to accrue kudosh. While cash is what you need to actually pay for things, kudosh is the currency that helps you unlock things of varying degrees of importance. Kudosh unlocks wallpaper. Kudosh unlocks flooring. Kudosh unlocks clothing. Kudosh unlocks everything. Some of these items are just frivolous aesthetics, but others are absolutely essential to keeping your students happy or to keeping them educated. You should be very careful about overspending kudosh on frivolities until you have some extra to spare since some of the more important items like those needed for assignments or those needed to meet student requests can be quite expensive. On the bright side, once you do unlock an item, you'll have access to it moving forward. You don't have to unlock it for each level or anything. Gaining stars in career mode is a great way to earn kudosh, as is accomplishing side objectives and allowing campus assessments to take place. Holding events can earn you kudosh, and winning awards at the end of the year can earn you kudosh per award. 
make sure your students are happy, make sure they're getting good grades, have a high average level of attractiveness and prestige across rooms, have very active student clubs, and try and get some star teachers who help students acquire the most XP. These are just some of the most basic awards you can try and win, and if I listed them all, well, we'd be here for a very long time. Point is, try and bag as many as you can. Finally, in career mode, you should do your best to accomplish career goals as quickly as possible. They can provide quite a hefty amount of kudosh when claimed, and each goal can be accomplished three times to earn more and more. Obviously, these goals and their requirements increase exponentially by a significant amount with every step, but still, some are very easy to hit, others can take a fair bit more time and effort, and either way, you should remember to actually claim them to get a hold of that sweet, sweet kudosh. Summer's no break. The best part about school is summer break, but as the administrator in Two Point Campus, it plays an essential role giving you time to get extra busy and prepare for the upcoming school year. A lot of functionality is only available between school years during summer break. You can manage courses for the upcoming year, adding new ones or upgrading existing ones using course points earned by leveling up your campus as described earlier. Upgrading a course will allow you to take on more applicants, giving you a bit more flexibility with regards to tuition fees and acceptance rates. You can also take this opportunity to see what's coming for subsequent years of any one course. How many rooms of different types will you end up needing, for example, or how many additional teachers you might need as well. At the bottom of this screen, you can actually see how your changes will impact the requirements of your campus moving forward. Do you need more teachers? Do you need more rooms? Do you need more operational funds? Feel free to go back and forth between your course adjustments and this information bar at the bottom here to see exactly where the tipping points are. Sometimes just having one more student means you'll need a whole extra room and a whole extra teacher just to be able to sustain the sort of spread of scheduling that needs to happen for that one extra student just because of how, you know, classrooms have limitations of how many students can actually learn in them as we discussed just moments ago. So yes, remember, edit your courses, come back to the screen, look at the bottom, keep editing your courses and coming back to the screen and just make sure that you're able to actually afford and sustain the changes you're asking for. The game will also give you some indication of what you definitely need before starting your year, but feel free to go above and beyond. Buy more plots, establish new rooms, edit existing ones, you have no time limit. Summer break goes on until you choose to start the school year, so take your sweet time if you'd like. Just do keep in mind that there's no cash flow either. This means you're not paying salaries, sure, but you're also not making any income either. Note that summer break isn't just for building and school maintenance, it's also for student and staff maintenance. Feel free to fire or hire staff as need be, feel free to expel troublemaker students, and feel free to simply review students and student schedules to sort out who you might need to pay extra attention to. Student maintenance includes their own maintenance and self-care too. When they're on summer break, students can still take care of their needs. They'll take showers, they'll use the washroom, they'll eat. What I'm getting at is, you should make sure you don't start the next academic year until your students have had a chance to catch up too. Sometimes this is the difference between accomplishing your tasks to get your stars for career mode or just fumbling about hoping the students would just take a shower for once in their lives. Finally, keep in mind that your missions will typically, if not always, start with summer break. With the exclusion of the first level, you'll typically be able to increase your campus level before you even start that first academic year. Building more rooms, making them more prestigious, and hiring more staff will all help increase your campus level as we discussed previously. Doing this will give you more course points to spend on the course maintenance we discussed at the start of this section. This means that you can actually get a head start with extra students right off the bat in your first year who are all paying tuition fees and rent and earning you more from their collective XP gain as well. As we established earlier, at the end of the day, you're operating a business and money makes the world go round. I hope this video helps you wrap your head around all the moving parts in Two Point Campus, and if you have any questions or thoughts of your own, feel free to share them in the comments down below. If this video helped you out, consider hitting that like button and letting me know, and if you want to follow a playthrough or just see more similar management and strategy gaming content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. With all that said, it's time to go from learning to teaching as you take the reins across Two Point County. And as always, a 
Massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.